The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, Camtel, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this session of your distance education program with me, Bate Elvis Ebot, your geology teacher. We continue with our program today, looking precisely at lesson 21. And the top, the lesson is titled Prediction of Earthquakes. As you know already, that we can't go into a new lesson without correcting the assignment of the previous lesson. Thus, we look at the assignment, we correct the assignment of the previous lesson. And the previous lesson had two questions. One, using appropriate symbols, locate the various earthquake belts of the world. Using appropriate symbols, locate the various earthquake belts of the world. Two, why is the second Pacific belt referred to as the ring of fire? It is commonplace whenever we are talking about earthquakes, you will hear it being referred to as the ring of fire. Why such appellation? So you need to know so you can explain to somebody out there. Is it a kind of burning bush experience? So scientifically, there is an explanation. So you, are, you were expected to go through the lesson and bring out what the reason for this appellation ring of fire. The appropriate symbols we're supposed to use, you could use colors, you could use sign, other signs. So I did mine by using colors. And I annotated or came out with a key. When you look at my own diagram, it has three colors. That already tells anyone looking at my work that there are three major epic regions of the world. That's the first thing. Because when you look at the world map, you realize that all the continents are white. But some oceans are have diff having different colors which are not white. And the colors are not the same. That is a clear indication that the major areas of ethnic in the world are three. And so I start with the first area. The first area which I named or I located with the color green is the Second Pacific Belt. This is it. You see, along the coast, it spans from the coast of South America, continues to the coast of North America, Canada, goes round and comes this way, the coast of Southeast Asia, and finally down to 
Australia. So that green, the green portion of my map depicts or signifies the region referred to as the Pacific Ring of Fire or the Second Pacific Belt. That is the first zone of earthquake I have located. The next zone of earthquake is this one which I decided to use with a red coral, which is referred to as, when you look at this portion, which portion is closer to Africa and Europe, the Mediterranean Sea. So therefore, that particular area is titled, that is located as the Mediterranean Belt of Earthquakes. It is given red coloration. You see how it spans from North Africa right to South East Asia and some portions of South Eastern part of Europe. That is my Mediterranean belt. Last but not the least, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, which is color yellow. This is. So with these three different colors, I have answered the questions correctly because it was that I should use appropriate symbols to locate the deep, the major earthquake regions of the world. So the three colors already indicate three major earthquake belts, and each color represented or represent a particular earthquake zone. I said the green stands for the Second Pacific Belt or the Ring of Fire, the red, the Mediterranean Belt, and the yellow, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. This is how you were expected to symbolize these zones on a world map. Question two. Why do we refer to the Second Pacific Belt as the Ring of Fire? It is called the Ring of Fire because this area has a lot of volcanoes all along its length. And because there are numerous volcanoes along its length, these volcanoes keep on erupting, producing fire, which is observed and so termed the ring of fire. It's actually, a, it appears in a kind of ring-like manner. So that's why it is referred to as the ring of fire. Our topic for today, for this lesson, is prediction of earthquakes. How can we predict the occurrence of future earthquakes? As usual, we have as our lesson overview the outcomes of this lesson or the lesson objectives, the previous knowledge, the real life situation that this lesson seeks to explain or has an explanation to that real life situation. We test the hypothesis, learning activities, we give a summary of today's lesson or of this lesson. Then we take exercise, application exercises and then an assignment. The expected outcome of this lesson is to identify the warning signs preceding earthquakes. Identify warning signs preceding earthquakes. That tells you and I that there are some warning signs around us that we might have been neglected that before now we may not have known that these are signals that indicate the occurrence of an earthquake. So in the course of the lesson, we are going to list some of those signs so that subsequently 
when you witness it of the size, it will be a cause for alarm for you to be alert or for us to be alert of the evident eruption of the volcano or the evident occurrence of an earthquake. Our previous knowledge that will help us understand this lesson is gotten from the types of earthquakes and from the distribution of earthquakes. Types of earthquakes and distribution of earthquakes. Before the occurrence of major ha hazards such as earthquakes, people are being people are seen quitting their former residence. This somehow reduces the damage that might result due to an earthquake. What do you think could be the method that scientists have used to predict the occurrence of an earthquake? What did they use is what we are struggling as scientists to explain the cause of this lesson that we we'll all see. So how can we predict the occurrence of an earthquake? Is it by guesswork? Or by making some incantations or some signs? And no, there are scientific proofs that indicate or point to the occurrence of an earthquake. So some of the responses for this, our worry is that educating the local population, use of seismometer and other sophisticated instruments to pick up vibrations within the earth's crust and ground shaking will enable us to determine that an earthquake is about to occur. Learning activities. We are going to find out ways to predict the time in the course of the lesson. We are going to see how we can predict the time, the location, and strength of an earthquake. Well, predict the time, the locations, and strength of an earthquake will be one of our major activities in the course of this lesson. Secondly, we are going to look at some warning signs before the occurrence of an earthquake. Look at warning signs that will tell us that an earthquake is about to occur. So another worry is the abnormal behavior of animals, temperature increase and sudden release of water levels, in sudden increase of water levels in wells. That's another problem we notice around us that is giving us sleepless night. But in the course of this lesson, we are going to give more clarification. To begin with, Seismologists are tried worldwide after the numerous occurrence of deep earthquakes in different parts of the world to find ways to predict the time, locate, and the strength of an earthquake. So it has been the duty, so responsibility of the seismologists to try to give an answer of the exact time the earthquake occur, occurred the location where the earthquake occurred and the strength of that earthquake. Also, they try to pick out certain warning signs that preceded the occurrence of an earthquake. This is very important to have at the back of our mind. So, when they do this, it will lead to the putting in place of special earthquake monitoring stations which help to watch these signs. So, to be able to predict the occurrence of an earthquake, special earthquake monitoring stations have been set up to watch for signs. For the case of Cameroon, we have the RIGM Center for Monitoring Earthquakes in, 
a Kona. Data from such stations have led to some success in predicting earthquakes. So there are researchers who spend a lot of time monitoring the behavior of these earthquakes, monitoring signs, release signs indicating the imminent occurrence of an earthquake, and they stay focused in specialized sector with specialized equipment for monitoring earthquakes. After years of studies, years of research, years of observation, years of monitoring, the following signs have been used to predict the occurrence of an earthquake. One, we can say an earthquake will likely occur when we are witnessing a series of small tremors which are usually referred to as four shocks. Witnessing of small, witnessing of a series of small tremors, usually referred to as four shocks. That there are signs that come before the angry finally occur. And the way, the second sign is changes in the speed at which seismic waves do travel through rocks. Changes in the speed at which seismic waves travel through rocks is another way scientists have put forward that could be used to predict the occurrence of an earthquake. It also, we can predict the occurrence of an earthquake through the use of sophisticated instruments such as the Global Positioning System, or for short, the GPS. So we set the GPS to monitor the occurrence of an earthquake. Immediately that instrument picks the signal, it indicates, and from the indication we can read and draw conclusions of how and when the earthquake can occur. Another way to predict the occurrence of an earthquake is spreading a part of land where we realize that land is opening up gradually without anybody digging it. Then it should begin to open our eyes to start finding out what is happening in that area. We may finally discover that is an indication that this land is along a fault line, and moving along the fault line would, would lead to the spreading of seismic waves, hence pulling apart of the land surface. This also can enable us to predict the future occurrence of an earthquake. Again, Increased levels of radioactive gas, such as radon, in deep well water released by, radio, by rocks under pressure. We cannot just get the bucket, put in the well, carry and then see radon on it. That means in an area, people have realized that after studies have been carried out, there's a high level in the increase of the radio, a radioactive gas, a typical case being radon. Then if people have raised alarm about the increase in the level of this particular radioactive gas, that should indicate that these gas have been released from the rocks in that area due to the pressure under which the rocks were subjected. So that already should start telling us that we should be ready for an imminent eruption or earthquake. Changes in the levels, temperature, and murkiness of water in wells, especially deep wells. You see the well does become murky in color. There we should be very careful. 
especially when the level rises, when it's not dry, when it's not rainy season. Because in the rainy season, water table will increase, the mokiness of the water table will also increase. But in the after the dry season, we realize that the level of the water table has increased, the color of the water is more murky then is a point that we can have in no distant time the occurrence of an earthquake. So changes in the levels, temperature and murkiness of water in wells, especially deep wells, is used to predict the occurrence of an earthquake. Local variation in the earth magnetic field due to changes in rock under pressure is another way to predict earthquake occurrence. Changes in the ability of rocks to conduct electricity is also another way seismologists have used to predict the occurrence of an earthquake. So this one, those were just a few points which we could study, know them very well, so that if we witness any of them, we should be preparing ourselves psychologically, emotionally, and why not physically to leave that environment before the worst happens when the earthquake will occur. After all this explanation, let us now see whether the real life situation has been explained or could be handled or has been handled by this lesson. Before the occurrence of major hazard, people are seen quitting their former residence. This somehow reduces the damage that might result due to an earthquake. To predict an earthquake, we need to give lectures to the local population. Like I'm talking now, how does it predict an earthquake? It cannot happen. We need to use seismometer and other sophisticated instruments to pick up vibrations in the edge cross. Perfect. Because when these instruments are planted in the seismological center where earthquakes activities are being monitored, the slightest vibrations will be picked up by these equipments and their interpretations given for the likelihood of the occurrence of an earthquake or not. So therefore, the use of the seismometer, which is an instrument for recording earthquake movement and other sophisticated instruments such as the GPS, will be able to pick out the slightest vibrations caused by an earthquake and it's going to help us predict the occurrence of an earthquake. Did we see this in the course of this lesson? Yes, of course, we realize that. Ground shaking. It is not enough when the ground shakes to think that there is a likelihood of an earthquake. Heavy duty trucks would pass or other things would pass that would cause the ground to shake. So, we see that when we witness this series of small tremors, finally called for shocks, changes in the speed of, at which seismic waves travel through rock, and then through the use of sophisticated instruments such as the global positioning system or the GPS, we can conveniently predict the occurrence of an earthquake. We take note that spreading a part of land along fault, increased levels of radioactive gas such as radon in deep well, deep well water released by rocks under pressure, local vibration in the earth's magnetic field due to changes in the rock under pressure, and changes in the ability of rocks to conduct electricity are some of the ways we can use to predict the occurrence of Emit, uh, eminent occurrence of earthquake. Exercise. 
outline five ways geologists have used to predict the possible occurrence of an earthquake. Outline five ways geologists have used to predict the possible occurrence of an earthquake. The five ways geologists have used to predict the occurrence of an earthquake include one, witnessing of a series of small tremors, usually called four shocks. Two, changes in the speed at which seismic waves travel through rock. Three, through the use of sophisticated instruments such as the global positioning system or the GPS or the use of the seismograph. We equally have changes in the levels, temperature, and murkiness of water in wells, especially the very deep wells. We have local variation in the earth magnetic field due to changes in the rock which have been subject, subjected to pressure. And then we have the changes in the ability of rocks to conduct electricity. These are some of the ways to that seismologists have used to predict the occurrence of an earthquake. Before we end our lesson of today, we have these two questions to take home and work on it. Question one, what is the significance of predicting occurrence of an earthquake? Why do we bother ourselves that want to be predicting an earthquake? Can man ever have full control over the force of nature? Two, give the signs around your house or neighborhood which will depict the likelihood of an earthquake. Give the signs around your house or neighborhood which will depict the likelihood of an earthquake. Don't forget to take time and do your assignment so that we'll come in the next lesson. We'll see those who did it correctly and those who did not do it correctly so they can learn and be more serious next time. The references which we use to build this lesson are from Ordinary Level Geology Book 4 and 5 for Science Students, Second Edition, written by Kenneth Lucibon and published by Grassroot Publishers. We call it Fundamentals of Geology by A. P. A. Boal and others. We have the Penguin Dictionary of Geology and we have Earth, Science, Earth Sciences, published in 1986. We have come to the end of our lesson 21. See you in the next lesson. And our next lesson will be on monitoring of earthquakes. Una tege si, ma tege yop, una tege minga, ma tege nyum, una tege majang, ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, ngani bana, ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndom, esa kina bia dinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne injubia yen